I suddenly have so much more respect for YouTubers who film in airports because like it is super awkward. Like filming in public is already awkward, but filming in an airport is just an extra level of awkward. Anyway, I'm going to DC uh, for something called the White House Demo Day. I got the invite last week and essentially it is a showcase. It's like a science fair for federally funded research. And I haven't quite figured out what this video is going to be like. Um, it will probably be some excerpts of the interviews that I did with a bunch of people there. Uh, if you're on Nebula, the full, like, the full interviews will be up over there if you want to hear more of them, the full, like, unedited ones, or lightly edited ones. Um, but I wanted to, I guess, preface this a little bit. Um, because it does feel a little bit weird to be going to the White House and talking to people about research given like the current state of the world. Um, and so because of that, like you're not gonna see any like national security or like DOD stuff in this video. Um, I don't think I'll be filming any of that, but it may be up on Nebula, it probably will be. I don't think we're gonna film anything on that front. Um, I will try to list out the people that I talked to in the event that, um, you want to look further into this kind of stuff. I thought that a lot of the people on the list that they sent me um, were doing some really interesting stuff around sustainable clothing, um, brain machine interfaces, of course, AI for art. Um, and yeah, so we're off to DC and we will see how this goes. And then I get to come back to Boston tonight, which will also be lots of fun. So let's go. The first people that I talked to were from DARPA, so this is a little bit of national security stuff. Um, but essentially, they're looking at deep fake detection, and here's my conversation with them. The work that we're showing is from our two DARPA research programs, our media forensics and our semantic forensics programs. And those were programs to build algorithms that can automatically assess media and determine whether it was falsified or manipulated. Uh, so we talked about problems like detection, yeah. uh, attribution, does media come from where it claims it came from, characterization, something generated for malicious purposes. Yeah. Uh, the model that we're showing here, this is actually a deep fake of me, mm -hmm. and we're able to detect it. Uh, algorithm automatically can determine that that is a uh, likely manipulated video. So the way this works is we build a machine learning model for how my head moves, how mm -hmm. parts of my face move. Those oh, are what's called the uh, facial action units. So that is things like the corner of the eyes, corner of the mouth, mm -hmm. how the eyebrows move. So from an hour's worth of known good mm -hmm. video data, we can build that person-specific model and then use it to determine, is this that real individual? Okay. Is this a deep fake? And so we have a result here on a deep fake video of me. We have a result showing that on a real video, mm -hmm. we understand that it's really me. And then uh, we have some results uh, on Gwen Eiffel as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's one capability that we're demonstrating. And then another is uh, a whole suite of algorithms that look at media in different ways okay. to try and, is this again generated image? Is this yeah. a latent uh, diffusion? So we'll click on the next. Uh, so this is actually a mm -hmm. image that was uh, generated with latent diffusion. This finding says, we strongly think this actually comes from a latent uh, diffusion algorithm. If we go to one more tab over. So an analyst or someone using the tool can dig down. There's multiple detection results. You get some understanding of the algorithms that are run. What was the training mm -hmm. data used for? What are the algorithms trying to detect? Um, but the goal really is to be able to allow people to rapidly prioritize media yes. and understand if something was generated or not. The next people I talked to were actually right next to them. The big screen in front of me is um, a panel that you like touch through to create a prompt. Hey, tricks. Sure. Hey, I don't know. Right, so here's the best part for me, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, tight. Wait, but where does it generate? Right? Mm -hmm. right, so because if you oh. use it at all, you know that it normally generates me. Mm -hmm. so that's the first time in the second time. He's gonna then walk you through like how does the next stage of this go, or you get you know whatever your first one is, and then iterate between what you may want, mm -hmm. what is the dance, kind of like that thing, and then we'll figure it out. Is there a functional Whoa, difference you could say? That's cyber matrix. In, in the matrix. Yeah. yeah. That's a. Uh, 
very open floor plan hospital. <laughs> so oh, there's yeah. just nothing about, in it. Future's all about that space. There's just like nothing in it though. <laughs> yeah, and that's where we can start to get now. Uh, yeah. You know, not adding stuff, right? Like, yeah. You know, it's type add stuff. People in it. <laughs> what do we get? Okay. So I feel better about this hospital. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so like, if we, if we go into something, if we go into something like this, you know, the way that you know I end up using that from mm-hmm. like a commercial standpoint, like uh, brainstorming, like how to iterate, how to get information out, mm-hmm. is that I come into something like this and I immediately get visual feedback mm-hmm. from these kinds of elements because I can just drop it in there, yeah. have a clear understanding of like, is this the right kind of like yeah. that we're trying to put out? Mm-hmm. Like if we're trying to harness information, you know, like we can start in a very simplistic place like this, but then do like creative concept in, yeah. like human, you know, input and all that kind of Is that uh, the process. Brooklyn Museum? Or was the prompt based on the, the Brooklyn prompt, Museum? The prompt was based about Washington. Interesting. So that looks exactly like the Brooklyn Museum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, I, I, as I started to move there, you know, to me, like, the building wasn't as important. It's yeah. more about the people, right? And where is that if, uh, innovation coming from, right? Mm-hmm. And to me, it's about the diversity. And, yeah. Like, you know, so like, if AI is being pushed forward, it's it's about like all the biases that we need to like, yeah, and get against them this is the right visual and image that starts to like yeah. convey that story. So, you know, then we start to validate and yeah. say, okay, this one is not mm-hmm. necessarily conveying the same storyline mm-hmm. as this, but it's still valuable because it depends on like what kind of audience you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, then simply like, you know, the way that I use it professionally in my practice is that, you know, and this is like a real case study, like a brand mm-hmm. came to us asking us for a Formula One brand for mm-hmm. Miami. And so, you know, I immediately have an idea. Oh, cool. Just general Miami vibes. Yeah. You like, know, plush furniture. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they want mm-hmm. to be pink. Okay. It's like one of their products is pink. So then, so, you start then, to, yeah. so then you start to marry the two. You create them isolated to understand what you're missing. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, oh, maybe we're missing a sculpture. Mm-hmm. So you prompt that and then you get to a, a place like this. Mm-hmm. But then you know, oh, this fun. one, you know, I go, yeah. okay, cool. I want to be right in front of the water. Mm-hmm. The proposition. And then like, I get to then experiment with what is the opposite side of this. Yes. And then I can start to visualize it. But then I'm still working with 3D designers. I'm still yeah. working with interior designers. Yeah. All those people. Yeah. And this is almost like a communication tool mm-hmm. that I didn't have before. Mm-hmm. And, and it's so powerful because like, as a creative director, now I can essentially yeah. do what I used to do before, but give my team significantly much more direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a bit more focused and fair. Yeah. Because a lot of the times it's like, oh, make me some mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's like, well, yeah. I could make you. Yeah, exactly. So, so to me, it's, it creates a, a very good working environment where like these tools are to enable you. Uh, yeah, they facilitate. Yeah, no, this is very cool, especially because I'm um, I've been meaning to like redecorate my apartment for a million years and also rearrange a bunch of furniture. And the main holdup has literally just been like, <laughs> how do I visualize things before I buy them? <laughs> well, and, and, and that's the thing because you know, in here you can upload yeah. your image exactly, and, then... the focus. and it doesn't need to be a one to one, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's for you, it's, it's, it's really like I, I explain this to people like, mm-hmm. I, I was born with the gift mm-hmm. in my mind I can visualize something from mm-hmm. an abstract thought yeah. and then I can put that in paper mm-hmm. right and that is like a skill that I trained over many years but other people benefit, could benefit from that mm-hmm. but they're not necessarily doing it from like a commercial avenue mm-hmm. they're just like no no this is for my personal benefit yeah. my personal improvement of my life quality yeah. and, and you know, because otherwise you would spend a bunch of money on a bunch of stuff that you didn't want. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, Which I already did, and I exactly. would like to stop doing that. No, and, and, and it's crazy because, like, um, when, I, when I was in school, like, in 2006, I was doing 3D visualizations of, like, how UI, and you can draw, through, you know, 3D furniture from mm-hmm. IKEA. Yeah. Like, as, mm-hmm. as, like, you know, knowledge, kind of, like, concept and yeah. all that stuff. And now it's like, yeah, like, now your webcam. Yeah. You your room. Exactly. You place this 3D environment, mm-hmm. but then you can use the general AI and say, cool, I like this one piece of furniture. Mm-hmm. You know, now mm-hmm. suggest things, suggest yeah. the world. And so, like, brands can now work in the space of, like, okay, cool, like, we can help you buy one of our products mm-hmm. by facilitating your overall yes. purchase journey, even mm-hmm. if it's not us. Yeah. Let's 
Turn it on, it's gonna calibrate. Are you? Yeah. Right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna stand it now. This is a wristwatch that mm -hmm. users will wear on their wrist. Yeah. After about three seconds. Oh wow. Get it up and standing. What I'll also do is I'll show you how it walks. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a two-step command. One is press the initiation button, mm -hmm. but also you have to make sure you lean forward and there's a set threshold. Okay. Similar to a segue, you have to lean yeah. forward for it to go. Yeah. Same type of technology. You have to pass the degree threshold, set amount, and then it goes. So now I'll press the button, lean forward, and then it'll start walking. Now the unit. Now with each successive step, you have to maintain that forward lean. Mm -hmm. So this would be for a pair of Not just SCI, um, for research with MS, stroke, so any, any condition really that you have a mobility limitation where you have issues with walking, this, mm -hmm. this device. So the, the good thing is we have multiple devices that we have been researching. And so this rewalk is FDA commercially available. Oh, cool. VA has put forward an initiative. Any veteran who is eligible will be able to, to get one. This, but this isn't hooked up to the, to the brain. No. No. Okay. It's this really a physical balance yeah. type that the patient has a learning curve. Mm -hmm. So we did for rehab. Oh, it's excellent for rehab. In fact, our research has shown that the veterans with spinal cord injury who use this at least four to six hours a week, they have all the benefits of like having an exercise program. You know, they have better balance, bladder function. They, they have better lipid profile. They'll lose a little bit of weight. They have better energy expenditure. They sleep better at night. And Remarkably, they get better seated balance when using a wheelchair because they, they use and engage the trunk muscles to balance in this, and it strengthens their ability. You know, a person with spinal cord injury sitting in a wheelchair, they reach for something and they often fall over. Yeah. So you have to. So that that is also. So you're at the Bronx VA. We We're are. The Bronx VA. Yeah. And then last up for my interviews um, was a company um, funded by the Department of Energy and they're basically looking at scale of clothing. Instead of going into the atmosphere, we put the carbon in clothes. Very cool. These are um, a sugar-based nylon, so mm -hmm. you know, domestically grown sugar go through a fermentation process that creates the building blocks of the nylon. Mm -hmm. They do collaborations with big brands, Adidas, Lemon, Craig Hopper. Um, and this brand checker spot is based on the algae oil, so it's like our algae deep And they have a, a bio wicking finish, so wow. it's all about athletic wear that's sustainable, good for you, good for the planet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and please feel free to touch. It's all I guess, is it like, I would imagine it's more expensive to make clothes this way, like for a company that wanted to like manufacture clothes? Well, it's a, it's a different process, okay. definitely, and you know, that has a lot of different components that go into it. But yeah, I, I feel, sorry, I am Melody. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sure. I feel like that they're like more high end yeah. athleisure wear, yeah, whatever. You're already going I think, yeah. You're, you're gonna yeah. drop a hundred yeah. bucks anyway. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. And like the, I think this one had a seventy dollar. Like the Adidas had a seventy dollar okay. price, right? So. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and for the admission based clothing, it's actually not a higher price point. Oh, interesting. Because yes. a lot of our feedstock isn't coming from something that could have gone to something else. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's it's waste. Yeah. Right? yeah. And so yeah. our feedstock is essentially. CO2, carbon monoxide, hydrogen that was mm -hmm. invented out of either a steel mill or a oil and gas refinery. Mm -hmm. It would have gone into the atmosphere. Okay. And so 
what we do is we produce ethanol. That ethanol can get dehydrated and polymerized to make polyester. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. It's essentially a lot of the clothing that you use today that would require petroleum. It's mm -hmm. just completely cutting that out of the supply chain and replacing waste emissions. Yeah. So circular. Okay. Very cool. And we did make all of the ethanol in all the for food. So this is the one thing oh. that maybe isn't accessible to everybody. <laughs> But it's going on people's bodies. So wow. Yeah. But yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is what we do. That's one of our steel mills. Oh, okay. Cool. I guess I'm I'm surprised that I don't hear more of this, especially like yeah. from the PR angle alone. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you see the, so we just did you went see the dress. No. Oh. So it's a little little black dress. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, Zara. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, it's cool, we're on the label. Okay. And we yeah. just went public last February. Okay. And so we're gaining that. Very cool. That's, yeah, no, I feel like, especially anything that makes, like, consumer choices around buying sustainable yeah. options easier, but also, like, especially given the whole, uh, the limitations of the whole buying carbon offsets in order to balance yeah. out the emissions that you produce. It's like, this sounds way better. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and it's instead of sticking CO2 under the ground. Yeah. Like, why not make something that you're going to buy? It? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so that's one of our classes. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So we do. Like have some questions. You can buy these now. They just came out. But this, the entire Australian Open line for the Adidas, mm -hmm. they did the Melbourne collection for the Australian Open this year. Okay. So it was over 35 different products. Oh, um, that's so cool. Yeah. Very cool. I'll have to keep an eye out for that in stores. So, of course, I forgot to film an outro for this video. And so I just got back to Boston, so I'm filming it now. <laughs> Um, but I thought this was really interesting um, and pretty cool. There were other people that I talked to that I don't think I took footage of just because I had like two hours of footage at that point. Um, one of them being accessible chemistry for um, kids who are visually impaired. Um, so like chemistry education, like learning how to um, put molecules together, but in a, using computer vision basically. Um, but yeah, this, this was super interesting. Again, if, especially in the case of that last one, um, you know, you're interested in contributing to sustainability efforts, um, that's a great place to start. Or if you want to donate to causes more broadly, especially since it's the end of the year and um, if you want to get it written up on your taxes, <laughs> you kind of need to do it today or tomorrow uh, when this video goes up. Uh, there are a lot of other interesting options for that that I'll get to right after this. In fact, there are more than 1.5 million nonprofit organizations in the United States and millions more around the world. So how do you know which ones can make the biggest impact with your donation? FO was founded to help donors answer that exact question. They pour over independent studies and charity data to help donors direct their funds to evidence-backed organizations that are saving and improving lives. GiveWell has now spent over 15 years researching charitable organizations and only directs funding to a few of the highest impact opportunities they've found. Over 100,000 donors have used GiveWell to donate over $1 billion. And rigorous evidence suggests that these donations will save over 150,000 lives and will improve the lives of millions more. And GiveWell wants as many donors as possible to make informed decisions about high impact giving. You can find all of their research and recommendations on their site for free. And you can make tax deductible donations to the recommended funds or charities and GiveWell does not take a cut. Personally, I like GiveWell a lot as someone who only recently added like a line item in my budget for donations. And now that I have that, I didn't quite know what to do with it. I wanted to make sure that my money was stretching as far as it could and GiveWell's recommended charities have been a great way to donate money with the peace of mind that my money is going to help the most people. If you've never donated to GiveWell's recommended charities before, you can have your donation matched to up to $100 as well before the end of the year or as long as matching funds last. So to claim your match, go to givewell.org and pick YouTube and then enter Jordan Harrod at checkout. Again, make sure that they know that you heard about GiveWell from my channel, Jordan Harrod, to get your donation matched. And that's givewell.org to donate or learn more.